Hi there. Welcome to Joyful Eating episode number 128. So today we are talking about one of my favorite concepts at the moment that's totally changed my life, radical acceptance. But before we get to that, I just thought I'd share, I haven't done this for a few weeks because I've been doing uh, interviews, but yeah, the best bite that I had recently was actually the last week of the week before is Bastille Day as I'm recording this. So French National Day. So every year I make a cassoulet for um, usually around this time of year. It's a beautiful winter dish. If you haven't ever had cassoulet, it's this amazing like uh, provincial French classic dish of beans and meat, <laughs> multi-meats. Um, and so it's usually, sometimes it can be just pork and beans, like beans and sausage, but often it includes pork belly and pork and duck as well, which I did, uh, and also some bacon and just with the white beans cooked down, a little bit of tomato, and then you like put a bread crumb crust on top and, um, and put some duck fat and crisp that up. At the, and it's like this beautiful, amazing casserole, like best beans a bean dish ever. Um, so we had that. And I also that night, um, some friends came over for dinner because it's just like, you definitely need to make it for a crowd. And my friend Susie, um, they bought macarons so that, that her family had made. So those beautiful little French treats. So it was like between the cassoulet and macarons, my taste buds were very, very happy. Okay, so our plan for today is first, I'm just going to show, show, share the story behind radical acceptance and how I came across this concept. Then we're going to talk about like what exactly is radical acceptance and why I love it, like why, why it is such a cool thing, and then how to apply radical acceptance to your life and what, what that actually looks like. And I've got some real life examples for you as well of how I've used this when I've been coaching um, coaching my clients. So it's a really, I'm so excited to share, share this with you. So the story behind this is I actually have a goal this year to read a hundred books in one year. So just a little under two books a week. And so I was going through, I've been a, I love audiobooks. So if, I would, if audiobooks didn't exist, there's no way I would be reading a hundred books, but because I can listen to them and do other things. Um, yes, that's completely changed my life. That's a side, side note. Uh, but I went through my audible, like I've been a member with them for like over 10 years, like since I lived in Kuma. And I just went through, like thought it'd be fun to go through like my history and see like, where are there any books that I've read previously that jumped out at me that I'd like to reread this year as part of my reading goal. And yeah, the, this book Radical Acceptance by Tara Brock really stuck out. And I was like, okay, cool. I'm going to read that. And I remember thinking it was a cool book at, like when I read it years ago, but yeah, I was, wasn't prepared for how much it's really radically changed my life this time. Um, yes. Yeah, so what is radical acceptance? So basically Tara Brock shares this idea, which is like a Buddhist concept of like just radically accepting whatever comes your way in life. And, and the, like, so rather than like fighting and judging and being disappointed and using all this energy, like to fight against our reality. It's just like, we just like, just open yourself up to being radically just accepting what is. And the cool thing is that when you do that, first of all, like, like all the judging and fighting and shaming ourselves and guilt and all that, that, and the disappointment and the fear that we feel around our current reality, when we're, we're not happy with our current reality, that, that takes up so much energy and so much mental bandwidth. So whereas if you just go for radical acceptance, then it's like, you know, things come at you and you're able to just, oh yeah, this is it. And this, and this, and this, like, and so it just makes it so much easier to navigate like all the ups and downs of life when you're willing to, when you're not making it wrong for these things to happen. So when you're accepting that, yeah, this is life. Like sometimes I feel disappointed. That's okay. No big deal. It just it takes like a layer of, um, of like all the, 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 that kind of extra pain that we pile on top of our situation because we're thinking, oh, it shouldn't be like this or, uh, you know, like, and making ourselves wrong for doing what we're doing or feeling what we're feeling, like whatever our circumstances are, like making ourselves wrong for those, like that creates, so you've got your problem to begin with that you're not happy about. And then we pile all this like judgment and shame and guilt and negative like that it shouldn't be like this all these negative thoughts on top of it and so we end up with this bigger problem 
then if we had have just stuck with the original plan, yeah. if we had have just like, like then the actual thing that's causing us. So when we do, when you open yourself up to radical acceptance, what happens is rather than having to experience all that extra negative, like layers of sh- should and shouldn't and shame and guilt, you can just let those go. And then you're just left with accepting what the co- current situation is. And it's amazing. Like, how much better life is so the actual core problems don't actually need to go away or change it like but when we just accept that this is where we're at like all these other judgments stuff goes away so it feels so much better so this is why I love radical acceptance because it actually can make any circumstance like no matter how crappy you're feeling when you just accept that this is where I'm at it just feels really good. Like, it's so weird. Like I've had some like experiences recently where I've been feeling really disappointed about something. And I was like, yeah, yes, I'm feeling disappointed. And just normally I would be in this hole of disappointment. And then also like freaking out and worrying about like that this meant that was the end of like gloom and doom, all these, these thoughts. But I was like, yes, I'm feeling really disappointed about this. And like, it didn't go into any stories about what it meant. I was just like, yes, I feel, I feel it. And it's weird. Like when you say yes, like, and like even to a really terrible, like a, not a great situation, just the, the like physical, like expression on your face of saying yes, is like, you have to kind of do this smile. And it just, when you smile, there's something about like it releases oxytocin or some something in your brain that just makes you feel a little bit better. Does it make you feel like rainbows and daisies? No, like there's still this, the disappointment's still there. The sadness is still there, but it just feels like a little bit better. So that's why I love it. It's because it removes all the dirty pain. So it make, makes the situation better just from begin with, but it also feels really good to go, yes, yeah, I accept this. This is where I'm at. And it just helps feel better. And so we get that smiling, we get that oxytocin. So I just, I love it for all those reasons. Um, so like, And the other thing that I find is that when you are radically accepting, it's easier to like process whatever feelings are going on and you're able to like just move through them rather than if you're like fighting and fighting and regretting and wishing it wasn't like this, you kind of stay stuck in this like battle. Whereas if you're like, yeah, you're open to go, yes, I'm disappointed about this thing. Or yes, I did um, overeat and I feel really gross now. Like if you're in that, if you're judging yourself and going, oh, well, I shouldn't have over ate, and you're in that story about I always do this and I'm never going to change and my weight's going to go up, blah, blah, blah. like that's really heavy and it feels really awful. Whereas if you go, yeah, I just over ate. <laughs> I had this like amazing duck skin that was like so delicious and I just kept going, um, which actually wasn't the duck from the castle. That was duck from another story, but uh, another meal. But um, yeah, like just it just feels, it just makes it feel so much easier so much easier to navigate don't go into the crazy stories and we're able to unlike it able to move through and move to a like better place much more quickly than if I'm stuck in the story of shaming myself and shooting wishing things were different so how do you apply radical acceptance to your life it's actually one of the easiest things ever it's just one word yes so whenever you notice anything that's or you can even if it's something good whenever you notice anything that's not going well like your kids are trying to kill each other at school holidays and you're like ah like yes they're trying to kill each other rather than like no they shouldn't be doing this yes my boys are fighting yes the boys are fighting again <laughs> um or you know yes i overate like or you're weighing yourself and the scale's up and it's not where you want it to be yes like my weight's up and I like I'm heading in the wrong direction so yes like just it's just this one word so whatever the circumstances are when you notice you're feeling blah about something or negative about something just say yes and state what's going on and I guarantee like it completely changes your experience of that situation it's so so fun so that's how you apply it's just say yes <laughs> really it's that simple and so how like I wanted to share, share some examples of this so I had a client in the naturally healthy club and she was really struggling she had done a lot of work on like uh you know getting where she was eating regular meals and stuff but um and she used to have this habit of snacking like 
late at night into the wee hours, you know, foraging in the pantry. And uh, for the, she, she has said one of her favorite things is like, she's got, gets this granola that's got all these good bits in it. So she would be foraging through them for the good bits in the granola and leaving the bits she didn't like for her husband. And she said that, um, but yeah, so this, this like late night snacking habit had snuck back in recently. And so I was coaching on that. So the first thing we did is just, I got her to practice radical acceptance. So rather than, cause she was in this, oh, I shouldn't be doing this and my weight's going up and so oh, like freaking out about it. So it's like, how about we just t- like, first of all, let's just accept that this is where you're at and stop making yourself wrong for it. So just when you feel that urge to, to snack or when you're in the moment and you realize that you're doing the late night snacking, just say, yes, this is me doing, having this late night snacks. And so she did that and like, so crazy. Like, so she'd been struggling with this for a couple of weeks. And as soon as she accepted that that's where she was at, she said like the first thing was that she actually made some different choices about what to have. So she was like, actually, I don't really even really want this granola, but I would, I've got some chocolate over here that would be good. So she, first of all, like gave herself something that was, that she actually wanted and that she was actually going to enjoy. So yes, helped there. But then after, and then after she kind of um, had given herself something that she really enjoyed, she found that then like afterwards, after that, like the next night, she was like, yes. Like when the urge came up, she was like, yes, I have that urge, but she didn't feel the need to act on it. So it actually changed her behavior because she wasn't, freaking out, like having the urge and then going, oh, I shouldn't be doing this. And in that like tug of war with herself, she went, yes, I'm having this urge. And she just let it be there. And then she was like, I actually think I'm okay. (laughs) And so it actually helped her to stop that late night snacking. So that's one real life example. And then another client that I have that's part of my secret society of intentional booze hounds. So the way we do work on changing our relationship with alcohol and become like reduce our drinking by being more intentional with, with our drink, our drinking. So I had a client in that, in that group and, you know, who is, has been struggling with over drinking like a lot and like really regretting her choices, having some memory loss, like getting into that territory of really not feeling good about it. And so I suggested to her, like, just to, rather than like being in this, like beating herself up, like shame, guilt, doom and gloom, I'm never going to fix this story. Like why not just, just experiment with radical acceptance. So whenever she like started to feel any negative emotion or started to beat herself up about how, her drinking, just to say, yes, I am drinking too much. Yes. I don't remember everything that happened last night. Yes. I don't remember. And she like, so, so crazy. And then she came back the next week and she was like, she'd actually started to make some progress. And she was like, but just that when she removed that shame and guilt and the judgment around the drinking and she just opened herself up to saying yes and radically accepting, then she felt a little bit more hopeful about the situation and then she was able to start slowly making some changes. So it's so powerful because, yeah, it just by removing all that guilt and shame, it puts you in a different frame of mind. So there's two examples, uh, but yeah, I really encourage you to just try it for yourself this week or even today. Like whenever you, if you, you know, get home from work and you're feeling crap, like, yes, I've got just had a terrible day. I'm feeling, yes, I'm feeling really crap. Like whatever it is, um, just experiment with this and then see how it go, goes, goes for you. And my bonus tip for you today is um, if you did want to go deeper on this idea, I highly recommend reading Tara Brock's book. It's a bit of, bit of a dense read. It's one of those ones though that, I like, I kind of find myself savoring it. Like I don't want to just read the whole thing. So I'm just, you know, we'll read a, read a bit and then come back to it like the week later. Um, just cause I want to like soak and like mass mar- marinate in the concepts a little bit. So I'm still rereading it at the moment actually. Um, but yeah, it's definitely worth checking out, but you don't have to read the book in order to apply this. All you need to do to apply it is just start saying one word and I guarantee it will change your life. And my other bonus tip for you around this is, um, there's a great quote from Louise Hay. And she says, you've been criticizing yourself all these years and it hasn't worked. Try approving of yourself and see how things change. So this idea of radical acceptance is a really great step to doing that, to approving of yourself, even when your situation isn't where you want it to be. Okay. Hope you've found that helpful. Love to hear how you, um, how you get on with playing, applying radical acceptance into your life. And yeah, if you're enjoying the podcast, I have a favor. I'd love it. If you just told, told a friend, if you've got, a, you know, 
cousin, sister, brother, friend who, you know, struggles with eating, would like to like bring more joy into their eating experience, then um, send them a link to the podcast and tell them, tell them, and maybe like tell them about radical acceptance and yeah, just share the love. So have a beautiful week and I will catch you next week. Bye.